Devin Pike at the Dallas International Film Festival, and I'm here with Will Cannon, the co-writer and director of Brotherhood, along with a lot of the cast members. Will, first off, thanks a lot for bringing the film to the festival, and thanks for spending some time with us. Absolutely. Thanks for having us. We're stoked to be here. Um, you shot the film in Arlington, so it's a true local product, and it's a, a story of a fraternity hazing incident that goes horribly, horribly wrong. So first off, tell me about the impetus to get the script written. Uh, well, the, the script is it's actually based on a short film that I did uh, at NYU, and, um, and the, the short was, is, it was like eight minutes long, and we just always felt like uh, that there was just more of a story to tell, that we just couldn't sort of cover all the ground we wanted to cover in, in eight minutes, and so uh, my co-writer Doug Simon and I just kept playing with ideas, and then um, we finally had a, a script that we really loved, and, uh, and, and you know, sent it, sent it to these guys to, to get them to, to come in and head to Texas with us. Now, you're from NYU originally. Have you relocated down to Texas? I actually, I, I grew up in Arlington. Okay. So I grew up in Arlington. We shot it in Arlington. And then so obviously, you know, to be back in Dallas is, you know, it's, it's pretty great. You've got, you, you've got to have some horror stories having, having grown up in that area where you heard of a grocery store robbing and, and everybody's just freaking out about it. Well, too. you know, it was a, a lot of what we wanted to do is we wanted to make a movie that has sort of like the fun twists and turns um, of, of like a genre film with like personal stories and personal touches underneath it. So, I mean, you can, you can go watch a movie and there's like cool turns, but it's, if it's glossy and it's, if, if you don't really connect with it, it doesn't, it doesn't really stay with you. So we wanted to have like sort of personal stories and have like substance underneath it. And that was the part of where Arlington really came into play, where Dallas really came into play. And sort of growing up here, things people said to me, um, and just sort of like kind of that local flavor that was really important to kind of layer in the script, other than just, you know, a crazy night with people doing crazy things. Going to NYU and, and Tisch, um, what's the, the main difference in the mentality for filmmaking in that environment at NYU and in the New York area as opposed to filmmaking here in Texas? You know, um, it's, it's tough for me to say, like, the difference. I mean, I... I I, the the thing, because I didn't, you know, I didn't go to school here, so I don't know, like, sort of like what the schools are like here. Um, I know that what I loved about NYU, uh, obviously being in New York was was amazing. It's being in college in New York, um, but then the the thing about the program was that they get you making films right away. They get cameras in your hands. They get you out because everybody. I mean, when you start making films, like you suck. Like you just suck, and you just need to have a camera and go make your crappy films so you can get it out of your system and hopefully then make films that don't suck. Everybody's Ed Wood the first time they make a film. Exactly. Floor. That's exactly right. <laughs> so Lou, when you were working with the film, and it was a lot of night shoots to you know to get it you know to get it right and get that atmosphere. Uh, t talk to me about the process on making the film. Um, oh man, well we got there about a week early. Uh, me. I've known Trevor for about eight years, and we've been like best friends. I'm roommates with John, so we uh, we knew each other already. I had worked with John on a movie be right before that, and um, so we we were already we didn't have to establish relationships or something. We all knew each other, and we were all having a good time. We talked to Will about, uh, and Will talked to us about. I, I don't know who brought it up first, but hazing, just figuring out how to make ourselves feel like we were really a part of that environment of being. I don't know what you'd call it, just, uh, what's a good word for it? Uh, pack mentality? Yeah, just, um, just uh, trying to get together in pack mentality, yeah. And um, it, was, it was one of the most demeaning things that has ever happened to me to be, to be, <laughs> to be hazed um, mm. by this guy. It was like the worst thing in the entire world. And it really made me feel what you're supposed to feel and, and really made me enraged with the fact that I wanted this thing so bad and, and you had to go through this shit to get it. Yeah. Do you think that had you not had that personal relationship with them, that it would have been either easier or harder to get into the mindset of these guys are really torturing the holy hell out of me? I think, I think especially with you, it would have been harder because you would have just killed John. Yeah, <laughs> you would have just killed him. He would. I swear to God, he almost killed him. It was bad. It was really scary. Yeah. Uh, that well, was a good well, buffer. Uh, I, without, without spoiling the scene, because uh, this, this is a, a really highly anticipated film, there's a lot of great buzz about this yeah, flick. Yeah, great. Tell me, the, tell me what leads up to the bit where there was this one time where you really would have throttled him to death. I mean, <laughs> well, I don't know. When, when, when was that? All right. We were in the back of a... I mean, they had saran wrapped us to a bench and poured condiments and things all over us and bird seed and all kinds of crap, and then drove us through a uh, car wash, but forgot to bring money, 
and also and forgot to bring, a, you know, a car wash. We were driving for a half hour, freezing, like, well, not freezing, but just like covered in, in peanut oil and all kinds of crap and like ketchup eating at our faces and stuff, the acids and the, it was the worst possible thing in the entire world. And then we got to the only car wash that was open and it was a, a hands-on car wash. So you had to do it yourself with a power washer. So we were fighting for with two dollars over feels a power great washer. On bare skin. Yeah, it was, it was the best. <laughs> <laughs> and right at that, at that moment, at that moment we were sitting in the car wash and, and there, I, I just found this little club, this little baseball bat right next to me. And I all of a sudden just had this crazy rage to slam John in the head with it and possibly kill him. And somehow in, in my brain, that wasn't that bad. That was like the right thing to do. <laughs> and, and, and it's justified in your skull. And Trevor, and, and Trevor, Trevor looks at me and he sees me picking it up, going to like do it. And Trevor goes, no, man. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and good. I was like, all right. And, and I realized I was crazy at that time. So it, the, the, it bears the question. When you're in the middle of doing the stuff on camera to Lou, how much perverse satisfaction was coming out of it? All the times that you came home and the, the place was trash, or maybe there were pizza boxes over the joint. Oh, <laughs> oh. Well, in all, in all fairness, uh, they had retribution. Yeah. Uh, they had something that I won't go into detail, but it, it, it was called Vengeance Soup, and I was covered in it. Oh, my. Uh, and um, there was some structural damage to the rooms that we were staying in. It was, it was it's hard because, you know, look, when you play these roles and you're sent out on a location and you're playing these people for 12 to 18 hours a day, it's hard to separate for those three hours before you go to bed or when you wake up. So you're still in that mode, and... Uh, there was definitely some uh, <laughs> some serious damages to the Arlington area structurally, but nothing that anybody was too upset about. But but um, it was hard for me too hazing these guys. Like this is one of my, these are my my yeah. buddies. These are my dudes, you know. Really it. And it was hard because like right, I had to put myself guilt ridden. I had to I had to put myself. Oh, how did you sleep? How did you, I don't know how you did. Anyway, it, look, it, it's, um, it took all of us uh, a while to get in the mode of where we were supposed to be in our placement in the pack, but it really, really helped for the film. I think more than anything else was us being really conscious of where we were supposed to be placed. In all fairness, it was absolutely necessary. Yeah, it was absolutely essential. Necessary. It was essential. So, Will, I, I, I'm seeing this camaraderie. I don't think you could have cast a better bunch of guys to have that kind of chemistry. If, if you'd have had to pull strangers, you know, into that, would you have had a harder time getting them into this kind of rage to each other? For sure, because, I mean, I think with any movie, you just, it's so important if people just feel comfortable with each other and, you know, and just develop the, 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 the chemistry and the camaraderie that they do and, and, and the trust. And, um, you know, it was interesting because Kevin, uh, Kevin, uh, Trevor was the, was the first guy uh, who, who came to the, to, to, that we cast, and he and I were sitting around one day, and he was like, uh, he's like you know, I've got this friend, Lou. Uh, you should really look out for, uh, for, for Kevin. I was like, all right, Trevor has some friend named Lou, whatever, you know. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to cast him. And he was like, he's like, no, you should really look at him. His name's, his name's uh, Lou Taylor Pucci. And I was like, oh, Lou Taylor Pucci's your friend, Lou. <laughs> all right, yeah, you know, uh, send him the script. You know, let's see, let's see what happens. But it was, you know, I mean, it, it, like it, just, it meant a lot to me that, that, number one, these guys wanted to, to get their friends in it. It means that they believe in it. It's something that they're, they're proud of. They're not embarrassed to be like, eh, I'm doing this script, but I don't know. Um, and it just got me excited because, you know, creatively, I knew that these guys would have, you know, so much, um, you know, just backstory with each other that they could bring to it and really would, would, would add such nuances to the film. You know, that's, that's what's, what makes films interesting. Yeah, the problem is, though, they kill each other in the middle of the shoot. You've got to recast. That's it's true. If they, don't, if they can't make it through the shoot together, then we're in trouble. So it's a fine line that we had to walk. What are we looking at for distribution for Brotherhood right now? Well, uh, our, our foreign rights have been purchased, so, uh, and we're, so they are selling it uh, all over the world. And then we're in talks with uh, domestic distributors right now. 
we have a few offers that we're, uh, we're mulling over to decide which direction we're going to go in. I hate asking the question just because it's always a painful one for a director just to get their baby out there into the world. And because and, the festival circuit, you know, is great for films like this, which have a really good narrative, really great casting, really great acting. But you hear about them once and you don't get a chance to see them again, especially for Dallas audiences who might not be able to make it out to the festival this week. Sure. Is the question, are they going to be able to see it? or what? No, because I, I, I know you're working on it. I mean, hell or high water, this thing's going to make it out in the public. Oh, right? sure, sure. No, and I think it's just about, I think it's, there's so much out there. I think it's just about breaking, you know, kind of, you want your film to break through the clutter mm -hmm. so that people actually pay attention to go see it. And I think the thing that's exciting for us is, you know, we didn't make sort of like a morose, kind of obscure indie film. We made an indie film that's really fun, um, that, that's exciting, that has like phenomenal performances in it, and that really gets people excited. You know, I mean, we, at, at South by we won, you know, we won the audience award, so it means like, you know, audiences dig it, you know, so we're hoping that, that doing that will, will allow it, you know, making an entertaining film will allow it to break through and get people to go see it. See, they're, they're still fighting. And they may, yeah. still, they may yet kill each other, <laughs> yet, I don't know. Not make it hard for any kind of a sequel. Yeah. Uh, will Cannon's film is called Brotherhood, it's here this week at the Dallas International Film Festival. Will, guys, thank you so much thank for spending you. time, I really appreciate it. Thanks for having us.